you got a Bible, you can turn to Luke chapter 12. Hallelujah. 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 There we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's alive this morning, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's live this morning, Emmanuel. Do you feel him on you there, Emmanuel? Do you feel the flame that's on top of your head right now? Do you feel it? Is it? Do you feel it? Or... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, this is a holy moment right here. I just feel the presence of God so sweet in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spent my whole life crying out for God to be present in the meetings. I'm definitely not moving on once he shows up. Hallelujah. I have a word for the single people of this house. The Lord has spoken to me this several times. If you're, if you're single, you don't have to wave at me. Here's, a, here's what the Lord told me. He told me to tell you that you're, um, <clears throat> let me say this. The evidence that God has a spouse for you is your desire to be married. Some people wrestle with, am I called to be single? Well, if you're called to be single, you'd have a grace to be single. And uh, the very fact that you desire to be married shows that you're called to be married. And, uh, and here's the other part. There's a lie that the devil likes to beat up single people with that like, like you're going to have to sacrifice to receive your spouse. Like, you're like, well, I want to be married, but I'm not sure they're going to be attractive or I'll like them. <laughs> Come on, am I telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. <clears throat> In the, it's not like, Lord, let this cup pass, <laughs> but, but thy will be done, right? No, <laughs> that's... <laughs> come on, come on. That's not how God works, amen? That's not how God works. You're going to be attracted to them. You're going to feel lucky to get them. Come on, come on, you're going to be happy. Now let me remind you not to let this word come to pass in your own flesh, amen? My wife wants to add to my prophetic word that God gives good gifts, apparently. You want to come share anything, or are you good? She should know. If anybody can bear witness to this word, <laughs> it, I know. I agree. I completely agree. Completely agree. God gives the Holy Ghost hookup. Absolutely. So let's pray that. Can we just pray that that people get married? So we got a gang of, of pregnant people. We don't have enough. We don't have enough engaged people. We need another crop of folks getting married, having first babies. Come on. So we're gonna pray. So here's what I want to do. If you're married, I want you to stand up and begin to pray. Pray for the single folk. Come on. The single folk have prayed enough. <laughs> they, they have prayed enough. If you're married, stand up and start praying. I don't care if you are widowed. I don't care if you're divorced. The Lord's got a spouse for you. Pray it. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, a godly spouse, someone who loves you, loves you and loves them, a blessing, and not a curse, not an anchor, but a blessing. It's going to fulfill them in the name of Jesus. Godly spouse, in the name of Jesus. Godly spouse, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, honey. Pray for them all. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Sorry, honey. You took too long. Amen? Come on. Give a clap offering. Amen. We're going to have a good time today, Mike. Oh, they didn't start my countdown yet. This is awesome. I've burned none of my time yet. This is great. My friend uh, tweeted last night that, you, as a reminder to pastors, you have an extra hour to preach today. Some just, uh, yeah, some of you are like, eh. Hallelujah. 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 I'm feeling good. You feeling good? Honey, you feeling good? Church, you feeling good? Man, oh man. We had a good service Friday night. The Lord came in power. Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 49. This is, the, uh, this is the statement of Jesus. I have come to cast fire upon the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I've come to cast... Wow. Uh. Ha. All right, let's see what happens today. All right, it's going to be one of those services. Here we go. First of all, before I get into this, I want to thank you all for the pastor appreciation gifts last week, the cards. I read them all. My wife and I, we prayed over them. Thank you so much. It's a blessing. Uh, my discipleship group and um, the leadership team got together a very generous gift for my wife and I. And we want to thank you. And as, as reward, we are going to leave with that money. And uh, we're going to take a vacation. We're going to come back refreshed. Hallelujah. Hey, I'll stay longer if you give more. I just, I just want to bless you and fulfill the, the, your will in my life. Um, I, I um, mm, ah, we're doing good here, Kelly. We're doing good. Hey, we're spirit-filled. Ha. Yeah. Mm. Turn Mike down a little bit if you would. I feel like I'm going hoarse here. Don't turn him off. Just turn him down a little bit. Shabbat. I just, um, what the Lord has shown me is that um, the Lord is um, empowering some people this morning, and in this season, actually, it's not just this morning, but in this season, uh, and your deliverance will be your ministry. And in your deliverance is your ministry. Ha. Huh. And uh, he's looking to do something, not just in you, but through you. And not just through you, but in you. And um, he, mm. And um, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And so, mm, just in, mm, in this mm, in this season, like some, mm, we're just a church that believes in real. Amen. Ha. Huh. And ah. Wow. And God is not skipping over you to your ministry. There's a vibration that's coming, Sarah. It's a new, it's a new rhythm. It's a new frequency of operation in your life. I don't know what that means exactly. I appreciate you walking up in spite of you knowing this is about to happen. Are you guys okay? I have 31 minutes. I'm going to use my time wisely and just let God dictate what happens. Pfft. 
So God is doing... God, uh. God is... He's, He's arranging some supernatural stuff to fulfill the words He's spoken over your life. And the biggest challenge, one of the, great, one of the greatest challenges we have is we got a, we got a, we got a beautiful, smart church. And it's just, it's, it's a burden, right, Sam? Just being this beautiful and smart, right? It's, a, it's just a burden we all have to bear. And the challenge with being this beautiful and smart is we can figure out how to do stuff on our own. And Jesus is looking for dependence. And so God speaks some things over our lives, and as, as faithful servants of God, we figure out how to start doing the stuff He tells us to do. And it's the craziest thing that we receive the Word of the Lord over our lives, and we have to surrender at the same time them coming to pass. There's like this, there's like this rhythm of receiving the Word, valuing the Word, surrendering the Word, letting God bring the Word to pass. And when we're immature, oh, that's, that's, that's a wrong word, forgive me. When we're young in Christ, we want to be his faithful worker, which is good, but he's really looking for sons to put, to, that he can put into business. He's really looking for sons he can put into business. And if God has a business, we have, we have many business people, people in this house. But the last thing God wants you to do is start a competing business so that you can go in the business that he's called you to. <laughs> he actually wants to put us in business. Is this making sense? And so in our, in our zeal to be good sons, we start our own business. And he's like, I actually want to put you in business. And so there's been this word over, over the, the worship team for, for years about just a community of worship And we're about to come out with our album, which is going to be amazing and probably change the world. <clears throat> and a real prophetic thing happened this week. Corey was dutifully trying to get a drummer to come serve in our, um, at our conference. Uh, we had a bunch of drummers, and we, 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 we're, like a, we're like a drummer sending station here at Revival Life Church. We get drummers, and we send them out. It's a... Uh, it's not exactly a call we looked for. We'd like drummers to stay. <laughs> but, um, and so he was trying to call some phone numbers of people that he was told were drummers. And he called somebody and he's like, hey, I want to, is, is this John? And he's like, no, this, no, it's not John. This is Bill. Not Bill, but it's, you know, nor John, but you understand what I'm saying. And he's like, oh, this, I'm looking for this drummer named John to come, and he's like, I don't know who that is, but I'm actually a drummer. And I'm looking for a church in Boca Raton. Now, I don't know how many wrong numbers you got to call to find a drummer in Boca Raton looking for a church. About 30, right? But this is a prophetic sign of what God is doing in this, in this season. That we, we put forth our best, best effort, but we trust God to bring the fruit, right? He drummed second service, by the way. Oh, that's his service, yeah. But you can't make this stuff up, right? In my discipleship group, we've, we had a whole bunch of, wow testimonies of God having a supernatural encounter people having supernatural encounters with God and how he is using these encounters to change our hearts and empower us for joyful living I hear it helps to hold it in, Corey. (laughs) 
I've tried the press Christianity. I found joyful better. <laughs> I find it I find it funny how much more accepting we are of depressed Christians and joyful Christians. Depressed Christians don't mess it with our services. Take the depression right out of you if you let him. <laughs> I came to cast fire upon the earth. And we all have a way we'd like that to happen. Funny thing is, so does Jesus. Jesus. Jesus has a way he'd like that to happen as well. And that's generally not the same as how we would like it to happen. What do you think, Duke? Yeah? <laughs> I don't want that joy stuff. joy stuff. Don't worry, they got plenty of pharmaceuticals that can help. Don't worry. Ah. I'd like to welcome you if you're a guest today. If you're still here, you might be one of us. can't sit on the front row and fight it I mean that's not going to work well there is a river there is a river there is a river there is a river that flows from the throne of God and the Bible says, out of your belly shall come rivers of living water. These are rivers of joy. These are rivers of surrender. These are rivers in the midst of the trials and the heartache and the difficulty comes joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Your anxiety is not full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. If we're going to move into the mysteries of God in this house, it means we're going to move into things we don't understand. That's why they're called, watch this, 
mysteries. If we could understand them, God wouldn't have to reveal them. And they look just like the world. There's a seat right there. And there's two seats right there. Right there. Right there. <clears throat> There's a river. I have a message. But so does Jesus, apparently. We don't always know where the river is coming from in our lives. We get prophetic words, we get visions, and we like, that's when it's going to happen. This is where it's coming from. And the Lord is like, you do not know where the river is coming from. We need to just surrender. We need to just surrender that. We need to surrender our need to be in control and fully understand what's happening. That's a good word, Carl. I appreciate you telling me that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow! See, the call of God on this house is to move beyond the surface level relationship into deep. Now, I don't mean super spiritual, weird deep. I mean beyond just, you know, God is good into, I actually trust Him. When I don't know what's happening, I trust Him. Now, let me tell you this. All I ever wanted to be since I got saved, Mike, was a preacher. Well, and I want to see miracles. I like to preach. I like two services. I get to preach twice. I like preaching. I like, because I'm, I'm called to preach. I love it. I like crafting a good message. I like revelation. Um, and, and the Lord is like, that's awesome, Carl. Uh, I'm not always excited about your messages. And... Um, Not that he doesn't like the messages that I preach, but sometimes he doesn't want me to preach a message. Sometimes he wants me to just surrender and let him flow. I find that uncomfortable. Because I don't have control over how I look when that happens. And if we're going to be people who actually trust God, we're going to have to surrender how we look sometimes. And we're going to have to allow ourselves to be misunderstood sometimes. And we're going to have to allow ourselves to be maybe accused of not doing stuff or doing the wrong things that other people think we need to be doing sometimes. This is what it looks like to be a follower of Christ. I'm not saying I am the model. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I am trying to do that myself with my life. I hope you'll join me on the journey. This is what I'm saying. What this means is like someone who doesn't actually want to be in front of people will sit on the front row and laugh hysterically because God is delivering them from something that's bound them for years. That's what that looks like. I'd rather live free than look free. Shaba. Ha! I'd rather live free than look free. We, we just like real. We like real. We like real. No, we, we don't like real messed up, but we do like real. How much time I got? Okay, here we go. Mm. Ooh. Corey brought a great word last week, yeah? Of the need for fathers in this season. Shaba. Mike, can you hear me? I'm going to prophesy over your wife. I want you to pay attention because she's not going to remember it. It's, it's being recorded.
So Lily, you're in a season of Holy Ghost anesthetizing. You're in a season of anesthetizing. And anesthesia is great because you don't feel the pain anymore. That doesn't mean the pain's not there. We just don't feel it. And after the anesthesia, the Lord comes and does some surgery. Because he's got to cut, he's got to anesthetize it sometimes and rip stuff out. That's what happens when you first get saved and you're in this like glory bubble. And he's delivering you from what used to be important in your life. But the glory is so wonderful, that's the anesthesia that you don't, doesn't hurt anymore. He's ripping out these things that you value. Right? That's what happens when you first get saved. And then afterwards, kind of, he takes the mask off. And he's like, now, now it's time to start walking it out. I've taken the, the cancer out. Now I need you to live healthy. And some people think that that's persecution. Like, things are getting hard now. No, 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 no. No, no. You're learning how to live free. You're learning how to live free. I've been, um, I've been fat and I've been fit. Living healthy is better. Living, f- it looks more fun to be gluttonous, but it is a worse life. And so the Lord will have us go through a hard season to lose the weight so we can start living healthy. Right? If you just live healthy while you're obese... I'm, I'm, I'm talking about from my own experience. Then you generally don't lose weight. You just stay where you're at. You don't gain anymore, which is good, but not as good as what he wants you to do is go through the pain to lose the spiritual obesity so you can start living healthy. Right? And once you learn how to live healthy, then it's easier and more fun because you can actually go shopping for clothes, right? Like, and you can look like you're in style now. That's a, that's a neat place to be, right? Right? I enjoy that more than finding stuff to cover up what you've not dealt with. <laughs> Is this making sense? And so Lillian, what a beautiful season you're in. And I say that, it's beautiful. And now the Lord is going to be moving you. The tent is moving. The glory is moving into who, toward who you are always called to be. Don't, don't let the enemy rob you of the joy in the transition. It's still your strength. Can you say amen? amen. Ha. got 12 minutes. You okay, Mike? I hope you weren't planning on going anywhere. John 10. You know that? Wow! Okay. I mean, ducks, you can see that. The Bible says the thief comes only to steal... Hallelujah. If you're a guest today. <laughs> I just want to bless you. Conference is next weekend. You think this is weird. Oh, you can take that scripture down, apparently. (laughs) Hallelujah. Pray for me, Corey.
It's the word of God for me. Corey, just let me know this is my journal. It's good to have friends. I felt this earlier, but um, if you have had a hard time having a baby, I feel like the Lord is healing that today. And I just want to speak that out in the name of Jesus. We curse infertility in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you might be strangely warmed right now as the Lord is moving in your life. We'll get back to that. Maybe little girls being released. Who knows there? <laughs> Maybe not. Here's what I want to. Here's what I want to tell you. The Bible says that the Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. And what the devil mostly wants to do is keep the presence of God out of our world. Jesus was, was if you remember, if you remember, he was baptized in the Jordan when he was 30 years old. And the Father spoke his true identity over him. Now at that point, the enemy knew that he was, he was scarred, Right? At, at that point, he knew, Sam, like when, once the voice came, panic ensued in his kingdom. And so the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And, and the devil tried to tempt Jesus to do something other than his calling, right? He tried to, attempt to, he tried to tempt him with economic power, he tried to tempt him with political power. And Jesus kept responding with the word of God. Now, when Jesus came out of, out of the wilderness, the Bible says he came out in the power of the Spirit. And the first thing he did is he went to Capernaum and started casting the devil out of people. See, when the presence of God goes with you, you just start displacing the presence of the enemy. Everywhere you go, the plan of God starts to happen through you. And the real goal of God on this earth, hear me, is not that you get a promotion. It's not that you get a new car. The real plan of God is that the enemy is displaced on this earth until the kingdoms of our world become the kingdoms of our Lord. Now, in the midst of that, you start understanding prosperity. You start understanding the law. Wow. Let me just say that. Good things happen. But the best things are that we have heard and obeyed God. <clears throat> and so, it's easy for us to want to be able to be in control and start setting up kingdoms and calling them godly kingdoms. And I, I, um, I'm going to say this lightly, and I believe I'm speaking by the Spirit. There is no Christian political party in America. Do not be deceived. But even today, the devil wants to say, if you use this political power, my, my kingdom will come. And Jesus already rebuked that notion. Now, you might say to me, but pastor, what about abortion or what about gay marriage or what about the border? And I'm like, no, no, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. Do not be deceived. I don't care who you vote for. I, I absolutely don't because it's all is going to be consumed in the fire anyways. Do not be deceived. All of this political nonsense will be consumed in the fire on the return. Amen. Do not spend your life on the temporal. Put your life into what is eternal, the kingdom of heaven. And um, amen. Come on. Um,
What we need is the presence of God. And the Lord wanted me to share with you this morning that He has such an abundance for you in His presence. And the abundance of God doesn't run out, doesn't lack, doesn't disappoint, doesn't run dry. It is not a burden. The abundance of God, watch this, satisfies. Fellas, you'll probably understand this. You ever been consumed with wanting that thing? To where you keep looking it up on the internet, which model it is that you need. And you're looking at the reviews. And you can tell the exact model. To anybody, hey, what did you want to do? I want the Mark IV of this, 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 model two. Whatever. Not this one, but the, could be the snowboard or the camera lens or the fishing rod or the, the bike part or the turbo or the, the, the rim or the, Fellas, we're, we're as covetous as anybody. We're as covetous as anybody. If I just got that carbon fiber thing, because it's always better with carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is like the holy grail of our modern day. And then we get it, and then we want something else. It doesn't satisfy. I don't have anything against stuff, or carbon fiber for that matter. I own, I own a lot of carbon fiber. Way more than I need, I'll tell you that much. There are small villages in Africa that could eat off of how much carbon fiber I own right now. So I'm not casting any stones. But it doesn't satisfy. Only Jesus satisfies. And so he says... My kingdom will be revealed through you as you seek me. Continue to be hungry. Continue to press in. Continue to go after. Continue to go alone if necessary. And he told me to teach those around me to seek his face and to be hungry for his presence. He wanted me to tell you that he wants to reveal mysteries to you. I'm trying to track with him in my last five minutes here. Shabbat. Mm. God is trying to lead this house on a journey. On a journey. And in this journey, we don't know where the river comes from. We only know it's going to be running in front of us. I know where the river is. I rarely know where it came from. I try to do stuff to get the presence of God, but I don't know what caused the presence of God to come in the room because He's God, amen? amen? And if we could figure that out, then we would turn it into a formula and turn that formula into a religion. And He really wants us to be lost in Him. And so, and so in our lives, the Lord uses the circumstances of our life to cause us to cry out and press in for more. Now, this is... getting rebuked in the midst of my sentences it's uh i say lord i just want you to be in control and then he's like all right i'm like how can i be in control a little bit (laughs) hallelujah full for jesus right and so the way jesus causes us often to seek more of him is through suffering This is the truth of the gospel. He uses suffering to rearrange our priorities. People are like, oh, people get saved in prison and and in the hospital, these jailhouse conversions. Yeah, it's called suffering causes us to seek God. It's actually in the Word. The Bible says, as Corey taught last week, that he chastens every son that he loves. I've never enjoyed chastening myself. I enjoy the fruit of it. Does anybody say, I want to live a life that God needs to correct so I can become a son? No, that would be stupid, right? But God actually corrects every every son he loves. Proverbs is filled with admonitions for parents to not let your children be rebellious. 
Because it's a lack of love. Whoa, wait, wait, what does that mean, Pastor? You let your kid raise themselves if you don't love them. But if you love them, you put in the work to be a good parent. And it takes work. It's a lot easier to let your kid act the fool than it is to actually raise them well, to teach them good dietary issues, to teach them how to be good students, to teach them how to walk in forgiveness, to teach them how to share. Hello. Teach them how to stay in line, right? That takes work. And I've never, um, I've never met a child who is excited about being corrected. I've never heard a kid say, man, my, my dad loves me. I know because he spanks me. I'm just so thankful for that. I've personally never heard it. I've heard lots of adults say, I wish my parents raised me better. I never heard an adult say, I wish my parents did, didn't give me such good work habits. I wish I didn't have such a good work ethic. I wish my parents didn't make me study and do well in school. Hello. I've never heard, I've never heard an adult say, you know, my parents raised me to be a good person and a faithful spouse, and I wish they would have just let me sleep around and be a bad person. I mean, have you? I haven't. Have you? I've never heard anybody say, you know, there's these guys at my work that get hired and then they mess up and they get fired. And my parents taught me to just be a faithful worker. I wish that didn't happen. Doesn't happen. Never heard it. We all wish we had better parents. Amen. Even us with good parents wish we had better parents. But having better parents is saying that I wish I had more training when I was young. What that means is you recognize the value of correction. And as a child of God, we have to be valuing His correction. And the Lord uses suffering to cause us to desire His correction. He will allow us to go down a road of pain and sorrow until we'll be smart enough to cry out and say, okay, now God, I'm ready for your way. It's just in the Bible. He corrects every son that He, he loves. In, uh, in Hebrews, is it 8, 5? Do we have that? 5 8, excuse me. 5 8. This is what's said about Jesus. We all believe he was a son, right? And there's a lot of words today about identity. You just need to know your identity. I feel like Jesus knew his identity. But it says, although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he. And here's what the world tells you if things get hard, run. And I want to say this really, really carefully. We've all watched people go through this cycle of follow God, things get hard, fall into sin, sin didn't work out well, run to God, things get hard, run away from God into sin, sin is not working out well, run to God. Because the enemy tells you, if things get hard, run. Just run. They want you to do things at your job you don't like, quit. You don't get the job you like? Eh, stay home. Marriage isn't working out? Check out. But God is like, if you will stand and allow me to raise you, I will make you a standard for other people to follow. I will create you, in you, a covering for other people to come into my promise. But you have to actually stand long enough to allow God to work, watch this, through you through you through you and so the Lord people in this house like I'm watching people go through this process right now and I want to bring relief I want to bring relief but the Lord is like you cannot shortchange what I am doing 
Time and again, people are in the crucible of Christ, and I want to bring relief. I want to let them know, hey, 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 it's okay. It's part of the process. I know it's uncomfortable, but God is doing this thing, and it's going to end here. And he's like, and if you do that, you'll cut off what I'm doing. You have to let them go through the fire. I don't like wearing jewelry that's unrefined. Like you don't, you don't, you don't buy, you don't buy diamonds that haven't been carved yet, right? Like this is like half inclusion, half diamond. Here you go. Like, can we work this a little bit? I don't, I don't want to, I don't want a gold ring that's like still half dirt, you know? There's a refining that has to happen. And that God is creating in you a jewel. There's a refining we are going through, the word says. That we can come out like gold that's been refined in the fire. And so he says, I've come to let fire on the earth. I wish that it were already burning. Now that, wow. Okay, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop. That fire is the Holy Ghost of God. We want Holy Spirit in this house because he's the one who does the refining. He is the fire that brings the refining. And, 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 and there are a million ways to encounter Holy Spirit. And there are a million roads to Jesus through the Holy Spirit. One way to the Father. And so, that's through Christ Jesus. And so we, as a house, want people to encounter the presence of God. We want them to have visions and, and, and visitations and to be caught up in the presence because once you get caught up in the presence of God and the Holy Ghost gets on you, it's like a sticky pollen that you can't shake. And when this sticky pollen is on you, it attracts God. It attracts Him to you. And He doesn't just stop at the vision. He doesn't just stop at the gifts. He doesn't just stop at the encounter because once you get a little bit of the Holy Ghost, you get all the Holy Ghost. And then He starts working on your heart. And He starts working on your values. And He starts working on your idols. And He starts working on the things that block you from Him. The, 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 the lack of trust and the lack of and, and, and the, and the abundance of insecurity and the unforgiveness. And He just starts dredging it all. Once the Holy Ghost gets on the inside of you, he starts cleaning up on the inside. And we're like, come however you want, Holy Ghost. We can look funny. We can sound funny. People can make fun of us. We just want you to come however you come. So if it comes through joy, send your joy. If it comes through shouting, we'll shout. If it comes through visitations, we'll take the visitations. If it comes through revival, we'll take revival. If it comes through serving, we'll take the serving. If it comes through suffering, We'll take the suffering. Because I want to be purified. Stand with me if you would. Ha! Wow. Mm. Whoa. All righty. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Almost done with you here, Mike. And so, mm, my musician come up now. Ha! Just put your hands out and say, Jesus, I just, no, you, let me tell you what I want you to pray before you pray, because I want you to pray with understanding. I don't want you to mindlessly just pray what I tell you to pray. In your own words, I just want you to put your hands out and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to come and uncover every false idol in my life. I just want the, the, the real, pure Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want the real King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And uh, some, and some people, I just, you're going to begin to say this about a couple hundred times a week. You're going to say something like, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because we get so um, convinced of our salvation that we start rejecting conviction. And for some of us in the room, a fresh conviction of sin is going to bring you the revival you've been looking for. It's going to bring a revival in your finances, revival in your relationships, revival in your walk with God. A fresh conviction of sin. Some of us just need to repent of needing to be in control. And so we need to just be confessing 50 times a day. Father, I give you control of my life. It's not mine, but yours. 
Start having these breath prayers that every time we think about, oh no, I need to do this. We need to make a confession. No, Jesus, I've given you my life. It's your, your will, but not mine be done. You need to just pray it 150 times till it gets in your heart. Do you hear what I'm saying? We'd be living with the aware presence of God in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray however you need to pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for your presence in this house. That your life would flow here. We love you so very much. And we pray that not our will, but your will would be done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give a shout to God. Ha. Ha. It's a good day. You picked the right service. The right church. How you guys doing? Hey, listen. Next week's our Power and Presence Conference. No, Passion and Presence Conference. I know the name. Br bring somebody. Friday night service starts at 7 o'clock. Saturday night, 6 o'clock. Then again, Sunday morning, 9 and 11 service. We want to get people in His presence. We need to get people in His presence. We need to introduce this Jesus to the world. Amen? So let's bring people to the conference. Can we do that? Let's give it up one more time for Jesus and what he's doing in our midst. Ministry team, if you would come forward. If you need prayer this morning, do not leave without getting prayer. We love you guys. Have an amazing week. I just pray your week would be filled with his presence and his glory. Amen. Amen. Have an awesome week. Love you. We'll see you next week. Give it up for Jesus one more time. Have an amazing day. God bless you guys.